Down in the description box below, you'll see my offensive tackle rankings for the 2014 NFL Draft. The overall thoughts on this class is this is actually a pretty good offensive tackle class, especially at the left tackle position in the first maybe two rounds of this draft. If you're in a need as a team, as an organization, of a blindside protector, somebody that can maybe protect your young franchise quarterback for the next eight to ten years, this is a good draft to be in a position to have to address that need. That's the good thing about this class. When I look at this class, so I will say that there's not that one kind of unanimous can't miss left tackle prospects. There are several guys that I think are going to be good left tackles at the NFL level and several other guys that are going to be productive at least right tackles or maybe even eventually flip inside to guard at the NFL level. But every one of these top prospects, so to speak, have flaws or questions about their game. Now, my number one rated offensive tackle, I think, is a top five talent in this class is Greg Robinson out of Auburn. Problem with him is he played in such a run-heavy scheme and at Auburn. You see the potential to be a great pass blocker based off of his size, his strength, his length, his athleticism. But you didn't see that a whole lot. So, frankly, when you're projecting him as a blindside protector at the NFL level, you're not really sure what you're going to get at this point because you just haven't seen a lot of that body of work. You've seen him be a dominant run blocker, be a force in the running game, which is all fine and good, but ultimately you draft a, draft a left tackle first and foremost for his pass protection ability. And some of the flashes you've seen have been very good out of Greg Robinson in that area, but you also see where he needs work on his technique, and he just frankly needs more experience doing it, especially as a redshirt sophomore coming out of Auburn. Now, you might be surprised by number two tackle in this class is Morgan Moses out of Virginia. I look at him, and I see more of a prototypical left tackle than I do out of a Jake Matthews or a Zach Martin or even a Taylor Luan out of Michigan. I see a guy that if he played at a bigger program would probably have more buzz, more press about him, more talk about him, more banter about him. But make no mistake about it, I'm very, very high on Morgan Moses. I see a guy and I see somebody that reminds me a lot of a Dwayne Brown several years ago coming out of a Virginia Tech, let's say. I think this is a guy here that is a top 10 talent in this draft class. I'm sure is going to be a much higher rating than anybody else gives him. But I look at him, and I really don't see that much of a difference, frankly, between him and Greg Robinson. I think Morgan Moses is very underrated as a prospect in this 2014 NFL draft process. A guy that maybe has been a little overrated, just a little bit, maybe Jake Matthews out of Texas A&M. You know, maybe you look at Luke Jokel and what he did as a rookie, didn't do a lot, and then he got hurt. You know, maybe you look at the fact that Jake Matthews really only played one year at left tackle. I'm not really sure what it is. When I looked at him on film, he was solid. He was very solid. He's a guy that I th could profile either at left tackle or right tackle, and he could be a very good one. I'm just not sure that he's the best tackle in this draft. I think Robinson has more athleticism, and I think Morgan Moses, frankly, profiles as a better left tackle at the National Football League level. The good thing about Matthews is he does bring that versatility of being able to play either tackle position, and he could definitely play, I feel, either guard position. Still a top 10 prospect in this draft. Zach Martin from Notre Dame, <clears throat> excuse me, I've put in here on on the tackle big board, but I could have just as easily profiled him as a guard, and I think that might ultimately end up being his position. But again, his versatility will help not hurt his draft stock. Some teams will look at him as a left tackle. Some teams will see his short arms and think he'll be a right tackle or maybe a left or right guard at the NFL level. Maybe similar, similar to, let's say, like a Justin Pugh last year out of Syracuse. Uh, the reason I have guys like Taylor Luan and Cyrus Quandijo drop down on my board a little bit isn't so much because of the on-field stuff. For Luan, it is maturity questions. You know, he had that has that assault incident. He has that assault charge that he still has to deal with. Uh, so I have some concerns about his maturity, and I have some concerns about whether he's going to be focused. But the talent is obviously there. Cyrus Quandijo, somebody that I've actually been very high on. The Oklahoma game, the bowl game, not very good. Show me some real concerns about whether or not he could actually be a left tackle at the NFL level. But there were times where I also saw him be a dominant pass protector for A.J. McCarron in that Alabama offense at left tackle. But you've got the knee concerns, you've got the knee issues, which is not something you want to see and spend a high pick on in a draft on a guy who might never play at a top level because he can't stay healthy or he has these um 
big time knee injury concerns. That's the one injury of all, maybe even more so than let's say like a stress fracture in the foot. <clears throat> that could always be a recurring problem. See a Julio Jones. You don't do you really want to invest a first or even maybe second round pick on a guy like Cyrus Quandijal, who you're not sure can fully profile as a left tackle at the NFL level, and he has knee injuries to boot. In terms of some guys that I think are underrated in this draft process process guys that I think are sleepers. Billy Turner out of North Dakota State. I look at this guy and I see a guy that could definitely be a left tackle at the NFL level. Worst case scenario, he's a dominant left guard on the inside. Joel Betonio out of Nevada. I'm not sure that he's a left tackle, but again, a guy that could play multiple positions along the offensive line. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see him be a late first round pick to a team like a Carolina, a team like a Denver, a team like a Seattle. A guy like Cameron Fleming out of Stanford, I'm not quite sure he could play left tackle at the NFL level, but I think he could be a hell of a right tackle at the NFL level. The buzziest name in terms of super sleepers out of this offensive tackle draft class is Laurent Duvernay Tardif, easy for me to say, out of McGill in Canada. You know, with guys coming out of Canada in recent years, whether it be the Cameron Wakes of the world or the Israel Adonijes of the world or the guys like a... Um, a um, Akeem Nix, who was drafted in the third round a few years ago by the New Orleans Saints, you know, a Duvernay Tardif is going to have a lot of buzz and a lot of um, movement up the draft boards of certain teams as the process goes along because teams are going to try and out-sleuth themselves. They're going to try and outthink themselves, and they're going to try and find that super sleeper, that guy that could be a franchise left tackle for many years that they only had to invest a mid-round pick in. Overall, this is a class of offensive tackles that is very good. Several guys to me project as <clears throat> at least at the very worst solid left tackles at the NFL level. You've got a lot of these guys that can sit there and play right tackle and be very good at it at the NFL level. And some of these guys, if it doesn't work out at tackle, I do feel have the versatility and the skill sets to be able to play on the inside, play at guard. So again, if you're looking for offensive line help in this draft, in particular at the offensive tackle position, you're in a good spot because there is talent there. But I would probably say if you're really looking for help at these positions, unlike the wide receiver class where you maybe could find help in all seven rounds, you're best suited off going with one of these guys in the first three or four rounds if you really want help out of this offensive tackle class in the 2014 NFL Draft.